Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. In the name of God, creed or Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. If we are meeting for the very first time, like Camper and Mochi are, <laughs> let me introduce myself. My name is Giovanni Bernardinone, and I was born just yesterday in 1182 to my proud parents, Pietro and Pica. My Italian papa had an affinity for the French and their culture. That is one of the reasons he fell in love with Mama and married her, she being French. That is also how I garnered the nickname from Papa, Frenchie. Or as you may have heard of me, Francis, though as you can see, I look nothing like the statues that you enjoy. <laughs> Papa was a prosperous cloth merchant. As everyone expected, I assisted in the family business, or that was their hope. Our village, Assisi, entered a border dispute with our neighbors in my 20th year, and I joined our local militia to protect us. I joined the fight. I was captured and taken prisoner. After a year of negotiations, Papa paid a ransom so I could return to the family business. But instead of going back to work, I became deathly ill. That recovery took another year. When I got better, though, I rejoined the militia. One day, I encountered a impoverished knight in Spoleto. Myself being of high means, I gave the knight the clothes off of my own back. I had plenty more where those came from. It was in the midst of that very night time that I was awakened by a vision and I heard a voice from afar. It was the voice of God who came to me, instructing me to return home because I was to accomplish a great deed. This divine intervention was a call to service that transformed the rest of my life and it set me on a new path of faithfulness and service. There was one other life-changing event that I should tell you about. It was this, once I was visiting Rome and I was taken aback by the sight of the poor and the homeless there. I exchanged my clothes of means with the clothes of a homeless person for a day and I spent that day begging. I say this changed my life more than any other because it did. So moved was I that I turned my back entirely to worldly ambition and committed myself entirely to the service of the poor in the name of Jesus Christ. Soon afterward, back home in Assisi, while praying, in the ruins of a church on the outskirts of town, that voice that I heard came back again to me. 
I was praying to the painted crucifix over the altar in that ruined church, and three times I heard God's voice say as clear as day, Francis, go and repair my house. Rebuild it. You see, it is falling down. And you know something? That is what I did. I took bales of papa's cloth. I sold those along with my horse to raise money to buy the building materials needed to rebuild that church on the town's outskirts. And my commitment to serving the poor remained unwavering. Well, Papa became furious when he learned of what I had done. He took that money that I had raised from me and he chained me to the walls of the cellar. Mama, after much pleading, eventually freed my chains, but I was brought to trial. I was brought to trial before the bishop. Right there in front of everyone, I stripped myself bare naked as the day I was born. I repudiated my relationship with my family and I gave up everything for the sake of my service. That was a good sympathetic bishop, by the way. He took pity on me instantly and gave me the tunic, soiled as it was from a farmhand. I took that, I marked the sign of the cross with it in chalk, and I wore it. And I did eventually rebuild that church I begged for and got the building material that I needed. The Church of St. Damiano that I rebuilt eventually became the home of Claire and the community that she kept there, while I eventually kept another community, a community of little brothers, for that's what we were one to another. We served the poor by becoming poor. In 1209, I took my little band to Rome to meet the Pope. Pope Innocent III reluctantly gave his blessing on my smelly, wrangled bunch, its community that I presented to him with our rule of life. I say reluctantly because he did not want to bless us. Overnight, he had a change of heart. He had a dream where he saw me, this ragged, smelly friar, propping up the shaky basilica that was at the center of life in Rome. There's one other thing I want to share with you. In 1223, this is something you will most recognize me for, other than the statue that you have out there. I look nothing like him. The Christmas celebration of 1223 included for the first time in the world, a crash. That was me. I started that. That Christmas, we staged a live scene, complete with a manger, hay, live cattle, even a donkey. There were a couple of dogs and cats too, some lambs and sheep, goats. We all brought candles and torches to welcome the Christ child. I sang the gospel and mass was celebrated. That tradition born from that simple Christmas from so long ago is now a common practice in places along the globe. Does it happen here? Does it? Good, I'm glad. There are so many stories that I want to share with you that will wait for another time like my sermons to the animals, creation, and the entire cosmos. And there's a poem that I composed called The Canticle of the Sun. You're going to sing words that are set to music that are inspired from that poem today, I believe. When you sing them, think of me. No, think of me rebuilding the church and caring for all of life. Think of me and join with me in this endeavor of building up, rebuilding, building up. It's what paves the way forward for all of life. And as you sing, imagine this. I didn't write those words at the height. 
I wrote them when I was as near death as anyone can be. I was decrepit, blind, deaf. I had to ask for help to get these words written down. But imagine that the more I lost my faculties, the keener my inward sight became, and I saw a creation already restored. This is the work to which we are all called, with God's help no matter what. All ye of tender heart, forgiving others, take your part. O oh, sing ye, alleluia, ye who long pain and sorrow bear. Praise God anyway, cast on him your care. Praise him, praise him, alleluia, alleluia. Until all creatures may unequivocally be say and enjoy their own being. Amen.